All right, I think we will get started. Um, welcome to the Skillstack micro-credentialing platform uh, reporting webinar for training. Uh, this will give an overview of the reporting features available in Skillstack, um, as well as giving demo of some of those reports. Um, my name is Rick Stoddard, and I'm the micro-credential uh, coordinator here at the Idaho Career and Technical Education Division. Uh, and let's get started. So this is the Skillstack team. There's Heather, McKenna, and myself. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any um, need of assistance with Skillstack or running through any of the reports that are demonstrated here today. Um, Today, we'll be going over a different aspects of reporting in the Skillstack micro-credential platform. Uh, the intended audience for this uh, presentation are those that, have, that are approvers and teachers in Skillstack um, to look at their reports, uh, as well as those that have reporting access um, as administrators or coordinators. Um, those attending the webinar uh, will be automatically um, in listen and view mode. Um, this presentation is being recorded. Uh, if you do have technical issues, uh, do raise your hand. Um, it is just me today, and so I'll be the one that will be handling any technical issues, uh, and we can um, uh, resolve those as those pop up. So today, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at reporting in Skillstack. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, briefly about where does the data come from. Uh, we'll talk about the different types of reporting access available in Skillstack um, and go through some types of reports and some use case scenarios, uh, as well as leave open time for questions and answers. So where does the data come from uh, that's in Skillstack? Uh, there are different, uh, ways that skills that data gets put into skill stack uh, the main way is through the idaho system for educational excellence ic we have uh, four uploads uh, where we upload data um, for capstone courses for teachers students and the course data into skill stack um, and that's the main way that data gets entered into skill stack uh, for um, uh, reporting purposes and for uh, teacher rosters and, and et cetera. And those those will be the data, the data sets that the reports pull from. Um, additionally, users can in, enter data. So um, post-secondary uh, teachers and instructors can upload their own rosters. And so we'll see some data entered that way. Um, teachers and approvers, you can make roster co corrections or add new users. Uh, to your roster. And so that's another place that data gets put into um, Skillstack, as well as the users themselves um, can update their profiles. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is that the EDUID is the key data connector um, for everybody. Um, and that's the one thing just to be aware of that that's the one thing that we want to make sure is correct um, when, um, uh, when using uh, Skillstack. Um, just to being aware, there is, you know, uh, with any system, there's a lot of noise in Skillstack or data noise. Uh, if there's bad data, you're going to get bad data out in your reporting. Um, and that can happen uh, if things are not correctly reported to IC. Um, that data will be uploaded. Um, there's also some platform quirks um, where, uh, for some instances, uh, the system doesn't like leading zeros, and so that can lead to some some um, data not being connected up appropriately. And so it's important to be aware of um, while the system does its best to pull data for reports, there is some some noise that occasionally will have some missing data um, in the reporting. If you encounter any of that, just um, or are questioning the reporting that you're seeing, you can go ahead and contact us, and we can work through it and and see what's going on. So there are different reporting accesses by user types, and there's a few different clues to figure out which user type you are. Uh, most folks I, that are probably viewing this are approver teachers. Um, so if you're approving, uh, if you have a student roster and you're approving skills and skill stack, uh, you're known in, as an approver or a teacher. Um, that gives you access to two different types of reports. Um, you can uh, see that you're an approver a couple different ways. Uh, if you're in user management, 
uh, aspect, which is some of, some of the admin function you can see with this check mark that will make you an approver, um, or uh, through the top menu at the top of skill stack, it will give you an approver and a reports up there, and that will that will be some clues that which sort of access that you have. Um, so if you're an approver, you have access to recent approvals um, and my approval activity by student. They're, they're sort of similar. Uh, we'll go, those would be the first ones we go through. Um, and then if you have uh, admin reporting access, um, and that would be um, giving you, uh, we'll start showing the drop down menu, giving you a lot more reports that you have access to. Um, these are the ones that you have access to. So it's my approval activity by student, current student skills, current student badges, all sub badges completed, badge completion, skill roll up over time, badge roll up over time, and sharing reports. When you're running reports in Skillstack, there are two ways to do that. Uh, you can run, um, when you get to the reporting screen, and this will be demoed, uh, you can run it on the website itself. And so you look for the little run report button, and that will generate the report for you. This is good if it's a smaller data set. Um, it takes a while for skill stack to compile and um, bring the data in. And so the larger the data set, the, um, the more it has to do on the display on the website. Um, in most, in a lot of cases, it's, it's sometimes easier to just download the data and look at it in Excel. Um, and that way you can manipulate it using any of your Excel's features. Um, and so you wanna look for the little down, the download spreadsheet button, which is kind of the, this little icon with the arrow pointing down. So one of the first reports we'll look at um, are two reports, um, and these four are for the teacher and a uh, um, approver. Um, the two reports are recent approval activity and my approval activity by student. So the use case for the for these two reports are if you want to look at the skills that you've approved as a teacher. So um, you want to see what recent skills that you've approved um, for your students, or um, and as we look in the different reports, um, what skills or badges have the number of skills or badges you've awarded. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is recent approval activity. So recent approval activity, um, you can get to this report from the approver menu at the top. Um, and so if you're an approver a teacher, you will have this menu um, and you often look at your student uh, rosters um, or the badges that you can approve. But if you click on the recent approvals, it will pull up the recent badges. Um, and in this case, I'm in the beta skill set site and um, showing some badges that have been approved. Um, recently to some fictitious students. Um, and what's good about this screen or to be aware about this screen is you can remove skills if you accidentally approved uh, a skill for somebody that they didn't earn. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that it's just a list of skills for the last 15 days. Um, and so if you encounter something where you accidentally approve something beyond 15 days, please get in touch with us uh, and we can help you resolve that. Um, but you can go down the list and see the different skills that, that have been approved. Um, and so there's a few different ones here. And if there was one that um, you didn't feel was appropriate, you could click on the X and get rid of the skill and it will remove it. Simple as that. Um, the other report to uh, that we'll look at is my approval activity by students. And again, this is will show you the number of skills or badges you've awarded. Um, it note it only does give the number, so not the actual badges. And so it's slightly different than that recent approval activity report. You can reach this one um, by going to the reports. Um, and depending on your report access, you'll see a different listing of reports. In this case, I um, as an admin, I have more reports available to me, um, but the one that we'll be looking at is my activity approval by student. And so you can click on that. In this one, you can limit by particular date or region, um, district, school, or specialty. Uh, here's the run report feature that I was, the button I was mentioning, and here's the download um, that I'm looking for if I wanted to put this into an Excel file. And so I hit run report. You can see um, 
unlike the long list in the previous one, this just gives a, the number of skills that I've awarded recently. Um, and this is from that date range. Uh, and then it will also say um, who I awarded them to uh, and the number of badges that those skills have um, uh, mapped to or, or related to that have been awarded. Um, and so it's a fairly simple report, but it can give you some numbers if you have to report the number of badges or skills that you, um, as an approver, um, have, have approved um, in, in the reporting that you do locally or elsewhere. All right, we're going to move on to a couple different other reports here. Um, we're going to look, these are very similar reports. Um, they just report on two different aspects. We're going to be looking at uh, current student skills. Um, and current current student badges. Uh, the use case for these are um, what students are currently in a teacher's class uh, or, or by district um, or school and what skills have been awarded. Um, you can find what badges that students have earned and who's approved them. Um, and so this report is, um, to, is available to those who have um, full reporting access. Um, you can filter um, by different ways of approver, student, region, district, school, et cetera. Um, note the word, the key word in this report is current. So it only shows students that are currently in a teacher's roster. And so if a teacher has used skill stack previously um, in uh, previous school years uh, and has removed those students no longer, um, that they're no longer teaching from their roster, they will not appear in this report. And so this is a good report. These are good reports to look at the current year um, to see that student, the teachers, what students, the teachers are um, awarding skills to. Um, one thing to note that if um, a teacher has not removed students from the their roster, they will still show up. So um, there are some cases where approvers keep this the same. Uh, don't remove students from the roster, and so they'll always appear in this report. And so it's important to know that as a as a caveat when looking at it. So I'm gonna we're gonna look at the current student skills, and again, you can find these under the reports in the they're right next to each other here. Current student skills and current student badges. Um, you can limit by specific approver, um, and so if you're um, a coordinator or uh, an admin and you want to look up specific uh, teachers and to see whether how they're uh, approving skills, you can do that. Um, you can look up by a particular student um, or if you want to look at uh, uh, larger levels by region, district, school, or specific batch. There are different ways that this can be used, uh, that these are related. I'm going to look up skills that I've, that are connected to me that have been approved. Um, so again, uh, the download, if you want to export this to, uh, Excel for, for some manipulation, or, uh, you could just run a report on the website, depending on the size of the, the number of, um, the, how large the report is, uh, you can see, uh, here's an, me as an approver. I have nine students that are currently in my roster. I've awarded 37 badges. There is a turn down arrow here that will give it a little bit more a lot more information and so we can see me as an approver here are my nine students that are in my current roster here's the number of badges that have been earned you can see Ms. mr stew disco or disco stew has yet to earn a badge um and uh again we're on the badges level um and so then you can also drill down further uh, to see the particular badges and when they've been awarded. So in this case, you can see that uh, Nelson Muntz has earned uh, a badge with calf care under the dairy science specialty, uh, as well as pest management under or ornamental horticulture. Um, and I am the prover in those. And so this is a good report to look at both the students in a person's class, as well as um, activity for a specific teacher um, or approver. The other related report is um, current student skills. And it's a similar screen as the badges. Um, there's, again, different ways to um, filter. Um, again, I'm going to go uh, to myself uh, and show that my activity, run the report. 
we have those same nine students. You can see now, instead of the number of badges, it's saying the number of skills awarded. And as we go down, we can see uh, the skills again. And it's just reporting it, it, you know, in a different manner where here's here's the skills now for for uh, Nelson, um, the individual skills related to it, and then the badge. And again, so we can go back from skill to badge to specialty um, related to the student and then connected to the prover. These are great reports if you're looking for, um, as I mentioned, activity either by student uh, or by teacher or approver. The next reporting badge that we'll, or the next report that we'll look at in Skillstack is the all sub badges completed. Um, and this is for relates to stacked badging. Um, and so if you're, um, looking for badges that um, are the sub badges related to a stacked badge. Uh, and so for those TCC badges, um, you can, uh, or TSA um, badges as well too. Um, you can look at those uh, by this this uh, report. Um, it has the typical, the typical filters. The one thing you cannot do on this report is filter by approver. And the other thing to realize in this is you will only see completed badges. And so badges that our uh, students are currently working on or have only completed a, a subset of the skills will not show up in this report. Um, and so for badges in process, if you're looking for students working through um, badges, you wanna be looking at their current student skills or a badge completion report to look at individual badges uh, that a student has re received or earned. So we'll look at this one really quickly. And so again, you can limit by specific region district, what you have access to, there's dates uh, or specific specialty. Um, I'm going to limit to a specific school. So I'm going to scroll through this list of schools uh, and we're going to hit Springfield Elementary and I will run this report. And so again, this these are the stacked badges. Um, and so in this case, these students have earned uh, the TCC food sanitation stacked badge that says within the beta, the beta system here. Um, and so these three students, Martin Prince, Todd Flanders, and Lisa Simpson ha have um, completed the necessary uh, sub badges. So that's where it gets its name uh, to receive the stacked uh, TCC badge for the serve safe specialty. Um, and so this is good if you're looking for the roll up of um, individual badges that lead to a stacked badge. Um, one of the, uh, another report to look at is the skill stack reporting badge complete for reporting is the badge completion badge. Um, this is a good report um, to look up at all the badges that have been completed. Um, the some caveats with this badge is it does not have a filter for approver. So if you're looking for badges by um, uh, a specific approver, um, you might want to be looking at the current skills badges um, or a different badge. Um, and the as this badge will also show badges that are completed that are not part of a stacked badge or um, or leading up to stack badge where the stack badge hasn't been completed yet. Um, so we'll look at this one. Again, you can get it from the reporting menu here. Um, just go down to badge completion. Uh, you can limit by region. Um, you can limit by time, et cetera. Uh, and I, in this case, I will again limit to Springfield Elementary. Of course, it's at the very bottom. Run this report. And you can see this is a larger report than um, the um, sub badge. You can see that we have 58 badges that have been awarded here. Um, you, we can filter by first name or last name. We can filter by time they were earned. So we can look at different badges. Um, you can see Bart Simpson's earned some badges. 
Um, and so this is a good way to look at by school or district um, what students have earned a badge or looking at a specific badge and finding out um, which students have earned a specific badge. Um, and so either kind of location-based or um, uh, student-based. Uh, unfortunately, you can't look at this, this way through using a prover, but it does give some functionality that's useful for reporting purposes to look at the number of badges that have been completed. Um, another badge for another uh, report that's uh, useful um, is for skill rollup over time. Um, there's also a badge rollup over time, but the interfaces are slightly different. So we're going to look at those separately. Um, this report, skill rollup over time, uh, the use case is if you want to see the number of skills or badges awarded by region on a monthly breakdown, uh, or you want to see the number of badges awarded by prover, approvers at your school. And so if you're interested in the teacher activity at your particular school, this is um, uh, a report that might be useful. Um, it does uh, look at uh, looks at data over time and just reports numbers and it looks at um, for two fiscal periods and you'll when we go into that you'll see that you can drill down by school and approver um, you can add there's some different export features compared to the other ones um, and just to be aware while as I mentioned there is another report called badge roll up over time but it does have have a different layout and filters related to it so let's give this one a look. Um, again, this one is available under reports. And so if you go under reports, you can see skill roll up over time. Um, and this one uh, is grouping uh, uh, things by time and by region. Um, and we're in the beta um, version. So only some activity has occurred in the beta um, uh, version of skill stack. Uh, so we're not seeing all the particular regions. Um, but you can uh, limit by a specific specialty or badge uh, if you wanted to. So here's a, all the different specialties. And so if you wanted to look at um, the agribusiness specialty um, that's been over time, and in this case, there hasn't been much. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Um, business management. So business management, you can see in region three, um, in September of 23, uh, there have been uh, this these numbers of badges awarded. Um, and you can see they've been at Joint School District 2, and you can keep drilling down uh, Meridian High School. Uh, and then you can see the person uh, that the badges have been awarded to. Uh, in this case, it's it's Buzz Lightyear. And so this gives, or uh, awarded by, Buzz Lightyear has awarded these badges. Um, and uh, these are actually skills, not badges, pardon me. Uh, and so you can see the number of skills that have been awarded over time. Um, you know, you can uh, look at different things. I'm gonna go to the region three here. We're gonna look at Boise State. Uh, Springfield Elementary, um, and you can see um, over time in the 22-23 uh, fiscal year, none have been awarded, but 23-24, uh, 328, et cetera, and you can break it down by month and then continue to look down, and you can see the activity of your report of your approver during those months and the skills that they've awarded. So the other skill, the other report we're going to look at is badge rollup over time. Um, again, similar to skill rollup over time, but actually has sort of a different interface, right? There's a good use for this that I want to, if you want to see the number of badges awarded by um, career cluster on a monthly breakdown, or if you want to see the number of badges awarded um, at your school. Um, this is for a 12 month period. <laughs> it shows over two fiscal periods. You can drill down by cluster, pathway to badge, um, et cetera. Uh, you cannot limit by approver in this case, um, unlike the skill rollup. And so it, this does have different uh, filtering and report layouts. Um, so uh, this is the badge uh, badges over time. If you go to uh, the reports, you can see it in the drop down menu here. 
you can limit, uh, again, by region, uh, district, and schools, or you can look at specific um, uh, badges by the career cluster. Um, and so if we looked at career development, you can keep on drilling down and see leadership. Um, and then you can see the number of badges awarded. Or if I'm interested in Springfield Elementary, I can scroll down on the school list and it will give me the, the areas that badges have been awarded at Sp Springfield Elementary. So you can look up by your particular school or your particular district. Uh, and then you can, again, drill down and see these are in the pathway for plant systems, um, hort the ornamental horticulture, when they were awarded. Um, and then you can see the specific badges that were awarded. So pest management uh, and careers in uh, horticulture were both awarded. And so um, you can find out when and the number. So if you're interested in particular badges, uh, specialties or clusters, uh, and you want to limit that by district, this is a good report to use. One of the last reports that are available um, for those with reporting access is the sharing uh, of badges report. Um, this is a, these are good report. There are, is, this is one report, but it gives two different windows or two different um, reporting screens. Uh, and this will allow you to see um, which students have shared their badges. And so we're awarding badges to students. We want to see if students are actually uh, engaging with these badges, sharing them with employers, sharing them with their parents. Uh, this will, will give show some of that activity. Um, and it will also, by badge, look at badges, which badges are most popular and which badges are being shared the most. Um, and so um, we're going to... Uh, continue on with the slides with this one because uh, these reports have uh, potentially some um, personal information that can be re released. Uh, and so we're just going to look at these on slides. Um, and so when you go to the reporting screen, these are under the reports. Um, and the first screen at the top that you'll see is sharing activities by user. Um, in this case, you can see that I blocked out the EDU ID. Um, but you can see that, that this particular student viewed their um, portfolio three times. So that's the listing of their particular badges. Um, and then they've shared it three times. And you can see um, different um, viewing and shares. You can see when they first viewed their portfolio and when they last viewed their portfolio. And so this is a good, uh, this report gives a good indication of how students are interacting with their badges and their portfolios, uh, whether they're, they're being used and being shared. The other uh, screen that's available in the, the sharing report area is the sharing activity by badge. Um, this uh, gives an overview of badges um, that are being shared and which ones are popular. Um, and it gives the number of distinct viewers, then the total share of the views. And again, it's giving the dates when they're first viewed and last viewed. So uh, you can look at this chronologically. You can sort all these if you need to. So that is an overview of the reporting that's available in Skillstack. Um, Skill and uh, these are the team members that can help answer any of the um, reporting questions that you might have. Uh, feel free to contest, contact us directly, or if you have questions, um, just let us know. Um, here's a, uh, if you have questions right now, um, I'm available to answer any particular question. Um, let me see if I can give you some uh, voice if you wanted to talk. It's like I've unmuted anybody that's attending that would like to answer, ask a question, um, or I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quickly so I can look to see if any questions have been shared in the, the question and answer area. <laughs> 